So, um, I will just begin and we'll see whether we are live or not. Um, can you all see the PowerPoint? Yes. That's good. So we talked in previous times how our mind is of a nature to wonder and that the purpose of meditation is basically to deal with our mind as it wanders and when it tries to find happiness outside we need to tell our mind that the real happiness is inside. When we often learn to practice our mind in meditation the habit of our mind always going outwards going outside becomes less and we can gradually change from the view from the nature of our mind to wonder we can gradually become more peaceful and uh, defilements in our mind whether greed hatred or delusion in other words the negative emotions and unrealistic perceptions become gradually less this process is called right concentration in Buddhism or Samma Samadhi and Lumpua Padnam, our teacher and founder of the Dhammakaya meditation tradition mm -hmm. he, said, he, said, he called it standstill or stillness of the mind as I mentioned in previous times there are things to take into account when you want to integrate meditation so make, be aware of your surroundings, create a good corner or a good meditation place for yourself if you want to build up a daily practice. Also be aware of the conversations and the people you associate with and be aware of your health. And that will help you to integrate meditation into your daily life. Most importantly, it's very significant if you it's very uh, important that you pick a right time for yourself to meditate in the morning in the evening or even better both but uh, if you uh, are not the person with a schedule which is similar every day then perhaps it's just better to simply has as you to simply have as a rule of thumb that you always start with meditation whatever choices you have for whatever you're doing in that day you always start with meditation we talked about the hindrances previous time that was two weeks ago and two weeks ago we talked that there are five hindrances which can sometimes obstruct ourselves from become from uh, developing our meditation Normally these hindrances, when they pop up into our mind, we do not need to be concerned about them too much. But if they are actually obstructing our mind and then you find that your meditation becomes very difficult, then it's good to pay attention to them, to deal with them properly. For example, by reflecting on the impermanence of life or by reflecting in other ways or by simply opening your eyes when you are distracted for example and then look at something peaceful like a buddha image or like a picture that is peaceful of a landscape or something like that and then after a while we can close our eyes again and continue the meditation practice so in this way this is just an example we can cope with the hindrances as they pop up in our mind. So this we have already discussed di discussed in the previous uh, sessions. So um, if you want to review that, I can send the PDF mm -hmm. in the line group. Yeah, please do. Now let's talk about today's topic. 10 daily practices for growth in meditation. These were actually recently developed as a set of practices by Lompata Machayo, who is depicted here, our abbot and teacher in Thailand. 
And this he developed in the early 2000s, not so long ago. It was a very good, uh, uh, very people uh, enthusiastic about them at the time. Many people were carrying little stopwatches to remind them to practice meditation every hour. But I'll get back to that in a moment. So it was a very important practice and it still is up to today in our temple. So these 10 daily practices, what are they? Let's look at them deeply. Here I've put them all in one single image, in one single uh, overview. Please note that there's two versions of these 10 daily practices. There is one version in which uh, uh, the practices are organized according to the chronologically from the morning till the evening. Yeah. This version is the original Thai version. Uh, and it has been translated directly from the Thai. There isn't a little, I have not made any adaptation. But of course, the adapted version with the chronological order is also okay. That is just up to you. But uh, whatever you uh, um, study, these 10 daily practices are very important. So let's look at them deeply. First of all, when you go home, the first one starts. When you go home, bring the merit earned to all in the family. This means that whatever good deeds you have done, we can share it with other people. So you will notice that many of these practices are about developing a positive attitude, positive outlook, and a positive, um, generally a positive uh, perspective on life. So when we are, have done anything good, we allow other people to be aware of that. We share other people any good deeds that we have done. This is not to, to brag, of course, or to boast, but simply to give other people the opportunity to be aware of the good things we have done. And so they might be inspired to do good as well. We do not always need to mention the numbers or how much we have donated or something like that. That's not the point. It's simply a matter of allowing other people to join in with the great sacrifice or any difficult good deed that we have done. This is an example of building a good atmosphere and building a good mood and emotion, a good outlook on life which is the basic foundation for a good meditation practice. The second practice is a bit uh, the odd one out. Uh, unlike the other 10 practices, which are all about uh, the state of mind, the second one is really about uh, writing your meditation experiences down. And uh, I will talk about that more in detail later on in this uh, series. So we write down daily the result of our meditation practice. The word result uh, means simply the, the, the things that happen during your meditation. So when you are, uh, have practiced meditation, you might want to make a record of that. It will be encouraging for you to meditate every day more. So if you have also the habit of writing something down every now and then, if you if you keep up a meditation journal, uh, it's important to make notes of things like uh, what you felt, uh, if you are using uh, visualization or not, and how did that go, and whether you uh, you can also write a, make it, maybe make a drawing or something like that. Some people even make notes uh, as to how clear they could visualize the image in meditation. For example, some people visualize a sphere of light at the center or a sphere, a crystal sphere. Then you can make notes how clear that crystal sphere was. But in generally, the most important part of this practice and this uh, recording your experience is to write down how you felt. Then, before bedtime, before we go to sleep, we think of all the good deeds that we have done and we allow those good deeds to, uh, to, uh, to 
and to make our mind fresh and happy. So that is uh, uh, like a preparation to go to sleep. So normally before we go to sleep, it's good to allow the mind to be refreshed and happy. I've noticed for myself that uh, any day, any night that I go to sleep with a meditation of at least uh, 10 minutes before I go to sleep, my, med my sleep will be much improved and uh, we will not have many dreams. And if we do have dreams, then they are positive ones. But if you can practice for longer, that's even better. But uh, for me, I usually practice meditation on other times of the day. So before I go to sleep, it's about 10 minutes or something like that. Now, when you have uh, already finished the meditation and you're going to sleep, you can then think about the good things you've done throughout that day. And imagine those good things to be like a sea in which you are falling asleep. This is a very good practice because it helps us to connect more with the good deeds that we're doing and to feel inspired to do more, as I already mentioned. When you wake up then in the morning the next day, you wake up from the same sea, from the same feeling. And the first thing is a positive thought, the first thing you think about. Sometimes in English language, they say that when somebody is moody, that he's woken up on the wrong side of the bed. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, you know that uh, expression, waking up from the wrong side of the bed. Actually, what's, uh, whatever side of the bed we wake up, it doesn't really matter. But it's important that our first thought of the day is a positive thought. Because when we, when we are having negative thoughts from the morning onwards, it's very difficult to la to rather Im to later improve on upon our mood. So the first thoughts of the day are usually very important. That's why there's an expression that we should wake up on the right side of the bed. In other words, we should uh, make sure that our first thoughts of the day are positive, constructive and good and clear. So um, that is uh, easier if we prepare ourselves from the evening onwards by thinking of our good deeds and sleeping in the sea of merit or sleeping while remembering the good things that we have done. It doesn't mean that we cannot think about any mistakes that we have made. Of course we can and sometimes we should actually. For example, Kunyai, our teacher and founder of our temple in Thailand, she uh, always remembered uh, her good deeds, but she also reminded herself whatever mistakes she had made so that she could improve upon herself. But the point now is that we are working on our meditation experience and it's important that we learn to connect whatever goodness we've done. There's a habit among Westerners in the people in the West that we don't like to be aware of whatever good things we are doing. This is to, pre to prevent arrogance, and it actually is rooted in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Actually, Jesus even said that, do not let your left hand be aware of what your right hand is doing, or something like that. I don't know the exact expression, but it's approximately like this. And uh, this, of course, is just to prevent arrogance which is important, but it's not about arrogance. This is about being aware, being motivated and being encouraged by goodness. When we are doing good, we should do so consciously, aware of the goodness and how it affects ourselves and others and how goodness is such a powerful force in the world, as long as we pay attention to it. When we have woken up, we can then meditate for a moment. Here in number six, it says to meditate for one minute. Of course, this is just an example. We can meditate longer if we like, uh, but you might also want to, you know, meditate after breakfast, if that is your thing or meditate in a meditation room. But this is just saying that when we wake up, we should just connect with the center for a moment first before we 
stand up from our bed. And Lompata Machio, he also says, well, if you have woken up, we should think about how fortunate we are, we are still alive to be alive for another day. And when we are alive for another day, we have many opportunities to do good. The human life is very precious. It's a life in which we can do much good. If we were born as an animal, we would not have the opportunity to do much good. But as a human being, we do have the opportunity to do many good things. Then we close this short moment of silence by wishing all living beings happiness. In other words, we practice loving kindness meditation as we just did now during the closing, during the closing of the meditation just now. So this is what we can practice every day. So you can actually see that there are three practices within this single item. The moment you are awake, when we meditate for a moment, then we reflect how fortunate we are to still be alive for another day. And then the third practice is to practice loving kindness. And you could also say that the, the reflection on death is the fourth one. So we reflect also that we will have to die one day, that our human life is very precious and that we can use every moment to do good. Then the seventh, eighth and ninth item are about keeping up the practice of meditation throughout the day. The seventh item is about the feeling. We are aware of the center. Here it says we are aware of the Buddha inside. That is possible if you prefer that. Uh, that. You okay? <laughs> if you prefer that visualization, you can use that uh, visualization. But if you prefer, prefer simply to be aware of your center, that is okay as well. So uh, we have use a feeling at this point. And in number eight, we actually close our eyes for a moment. So whatever you're doing throughout the day, we can take some time uh, every now and then to simply close our eyes and bring our mind to the center. Whether you're working, whether you're doing anything, take a moment off every now and then. In management uh, uh, literature, this is sometimes called a micro pause. And it has been proven in research that taking little breaks throughout the day actually makes you more effective and more efficient in your work. So if you're closing your eyes during your, your work at the office and your boss is, is, is surprised by that, you can simply say, I'm trying to be efficient and effective. <laughs> so, and then the ninth item is uh, actually being aware and visualizing the center space inside of you throughout the day. So this is a little, goes a little farther than number seven in which we have just used a feeling. But in number nine, you actually visualize and you are aware of the center uh, very clearly. This is of course a little bit more difficult. Please note that the examples that Lompa mentioned here are very often about cleaning and getting things organized because those are kind of activities are easy to uh, combine with meditation. So when we're cleaning something or we are uh, showering, it's often easy to meditate. So you can start with those practices. And when we are having a shower, instead of singing an opera, we can meditate. <laughs> then the final one is, uh, uh, it's about how we bring it all into society. So when we are practicing meditation and when we are keeping a positive uh, outlook on life, then we can bring that to other people as well by smiling, being kind to them and combined with number one to also encourage them to do good. So these are the 10 daily practices in short. You can summarize these with three aims. First of all, we get used to the center of the body. Secondly, we learn to think positively. 
So we have to unlearn as well to think negatively. It's not about being naive or not being realistic, but it's more about connecting and being motivated to do good as much as you can in your life. The third one is just that single item that is a little odd, uh, but important, recording your experiences. So these three are the essential aims of the 10 daily practices. So um, I would like to close with a final quote. The taste of the Dhamma or the taste of meditation, experience and attainment surpasses every taste. But this is what the Buddha says in the Dhammapada. That is a small uh, book of Buddhist proverbs and sayings. And it's very important that uh, we study this quote because it shows that meditation is about happiness and that there is no single happiness that can be found outside in the world which is as happy as the happiness of the still mind. So that is uh, what I would like to close uh, with for today. 